Good morning everybody my name is Aparna Agarwal and I'm from Bcom semester 4 K1 and I'm going to speak on the topic budget but before that I just want to say I'm highly indebted to our teacher in charge Mrs Binu Gupta ma'am for her supervision and her for guidance as well as giving me this chance to present a presentation on the topic budget I learned a lot why this topic because it's very important for government to allocate its resources in a useful and sustainable manner so therefore a well planned budget is really important to for economic growth and stability so that's why i'm going to discuss and give my opinion whether the government was successful in making a well planned budget or not so this is the road map these are the contents which i'm going to discuss in this presentation starting with what is a budget a budget is a financial plan for a defined period often a year every year the finance minister of india nirmala sitaram presents it on the first day of the february so that it could be materialized before the beginning of the financial year on 1st april it includes planned sale rep volumes revenue resources quantities cost and expenses basically assets liabilities and cash flows it's a sum of money allocated for a particular purpose and the summary of intended expenditures along with the proposals for how to meet them it can be a surplus budget or it can be a deficit budget surplus budget means more revenues than the expenses deficit means more expenses than the revenues now these are the prominent themes of the budget the aspirational india includes agriculture welfare water sanitation education economic development includes industry commerce inv investment infrastructure society includes women child social welfare culture tourism and environment these are the expenditure of major items in a budget which are allocated to them like 50000 and 40 crores is allocated to the ministry of housing so these are all these are all the expenditure of major items coming to the agriculture and rural development government has proposed a 16 point action plan to boost agriculture and farmers welfare the target is to double farmers income by 2022 there will be ease of procurement of the pumps and the fertilizers agriculture credit limit is also extended to 15 lakhs coming to health 69000 crore is allocated towards this sector which is approximately 3% of the whole budget The allocation to the health sector is decreased by five percent, five point seven percent than the last budget, which is a negative point. But on a brighter note, it has announced innovative initiatives that will enhance ease of living, improve the health quotient, and boost the opportunities for job creation. Rupees three thousand one hundred crore has been allocated to the environment sector this year. The budgetary allocation for the environment sector from the last fiscal year has been increased by nearly five percent. Four sixty crore out of thirty one thousand crore is allocated to control pollution, which is same as the last budget. Coming to the society of women and the child social welfare, more than six lakh Anganwadi workers has been equipped with the smartphones. A task force specially is appointed to improve the nutritional values of these people. Proposal is to establish Indian Institute of Heritage and Conservation. Five archaeological sites is to develop as iconic sites, and the museums of the tribal in Ranchi is also to be established. coming to industry and commerce 27300 crores has been allocated to this commerce sector a new scheme to boost manufacturing of mobile phones and semiconductors is done because there was needed a boost in telecom sector there are steps proposed to encourage exports through higher export credit and higher insurance cover setting up of an investment clearance cell to provide end to end facilitation on tax on textiles it has announced a package of 1480 crores and has waived off anti dumping duties it aims at en enhancing competent competition among various industries coming to the startups 6000 crores has been allocated for digital indian programs 1 lakh gram panchayats is to be connected through bharat net data center parks is to be established across countries by private sector 
startups with less than 100 crore turnover to enjoy 100% tax deduction for any three consecutive years in first 10 years. This is to boost the startup. Budget proposes to eliminate the cascading of tax effect in case of intercorporate dividends by providing a deduction in respect of dividend received by a domestic company to the extent such dividend is distributed as specified. Also, DDT dividend distribution tax has been removed. The classical taxation system has been adopted. The filing of the GST returns has been simplified and the refund has been totally automated. Now, the main thing is the new optional scheme has been launched in the new tax slab rates. In the old tax lab rates, up to 2.5 lakh, there was nil tax. Between 2.5 to 5 lakh income, 5% tax was charged. 5 to 10 lakh, 20% tax. Above 10 lakh, 30%. In new tax labs, till 2.5 nil. Between 2.5 to 5, 5%. Between 5 to 7.5 lakh, 10%, 7.5 to 10 lakh, 15%, between 10 lakh to 12.5 lakh, 20%, between 12.5 lakh to 15 lakh, 25%, and above 15 lakh, 30%. So with the newer tax slab rates and more number of tax slab rates, the tax has been removed as, as shown in this picture. But the thing is, but around 80 deductions have been abolished which has increased the taxable income. The deductions like house rent allowance, leave concessions, standard deduction of 50,000 which, which was given to a salarized person, deductions under 80C of premium paid in respect of life insurance policy up to 150,000, deductions of 80E in respect of interest loan taken for higher education, 80G deduction in respect of donations to certain funds for charitable institutions. All these deductions have been removed due to which the taxable income has increased. It has really affected the middle class. So according to that, this new scheme is not really helpful to the middle class person. The analysis of the various parameters affecting GDP this is the gap between the actual and the target fiscal deficit as we can see in this picture government may miss the fiscal deficit target because because um, the target is of 3.3 percent but the actual can be of 4.4 percent so a budget at a glance so these are the things which rupee comes from like from the taxes from the receipts from the borrowings and where it goes is to the central sector schemes and all the expenses which government proposed to do in nutshell i just can say the government has shown the intent to make uh, to take country forward in the next four years but it hasn't completed the nine yards. There's still a lot to do about in the health and education sector. The GST rates should be consistent. The taxation system should be simplified as a contradiction to it. It has been complicated. So hopefully these mouth watering promises like the five trillion economy by 2024 will be completed fact in one line if i have to say that the budget is without any conclusion in fact the finance minister herself did not conclude it on the floor of the parliament and left it inconclusive thank you